So in this video, I wanna talk about the three things that nice guys do that ruin their chances with women, destroy their success, and ultimately make them really unhappy. So if you stay to the end, I'm gonna talk about one simple thing you can do to start changing this area of your life immediately. Now, with that said, I wanna remind you, if you've been watching the channel a while and you like the videos, you're getting a lot of value out of them, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the valuable content we're gonna be creating as we expand the channel and uh, continue to grow. And also make sure to like the video, make sure to uh, uh, put a comment in the video. Those comments are huge. I learn a lot about what you guys want from the comments. Now, with that said, let's dive right on in. The number one thing that nice guys do. Now, before I get into this, actually, let's stop for a second. I'm a recovering nice guy. I was probably the consummate nice guy back in the day. This is the one thing that was massively destroyed my life and getting over this was a huge part of why I started this channel. So I have a lot of experience with it. So now what is this number one thing that I used to do and that so many nice guys do that destroy their chances with women? Well, it's really simple. They put everybody else's needs first. They make them number two and they make everybody else's needs more important than their own. You see, nice guys think that if they make everybody else's needs more important, they take care of everybody else's needs and they run to help everybody else uh, before their own needs, that they'll make everybody happy. And in the doing that, they'll get their needs met. And it actually is further from the truth. People lose respect for people that don't make themselves important, that make everybody else more important than them. You're just as important as the beautiful woman you're meeting. I want you to hear that again. You're just as important as the beautiful woman you're meeting. So if you really like this woman and you put her needs before your own and you constantly make her more important than you, it's like putting her on a pedestal and she's gonna feel that. She's gonna feel that she has power over you, that she has you wrapped around her finger. And if she's a gold digger or somebody that takes advantage, she's going to take a lot of advantage of you. She's gonna manipulate you, use you, and leave you bitter and angry. Now, if she's nice and she's a good human being, she's probably just gonna feel uncomfortable and start pulling away from you and ultimately rejecting you. Because when you make your needs more important than hers, she can't get to know you. She can't figure out who you are. She can't feel the power of your masculinity and your confidence as a man, your ability to set boundaries and decide what you need. It's not that it's all about you, but it's a balance. And it's learning to say, this is what I need. What do you need? And really creating the best scenario for the both of you. So that's number one, is understanding that your needs are just as important as that beautiful woman you're dating. And that will make her way more attracted to you. Don't put her on a pedestal anymore. Learn to say no, learn to set boundaries, learn to say yes when you really wanna say yes. Learn to be definitive in the things that you wanna do with her, uh, separate from her in general. So she has a masculine solid man that she can really get to know. So number two, what is number two? They reject their own masculinity. So many nice guys are ashamed of their own masculinity. They turn it down, they turn it off. They grew up thinking that masculinity was bad, that being a masculine man hurts women or manipulates women or is abusive to women. This whole idea of toxic masculinity is in their head. They hear a lot of stories like I did I grew up with my mom telling me horror stories about men and how abusive they were. Now, remember, my mother was bipolar. She's a beaut I love her to death, but she's bipolar. And she, she was not no saint herself. And so the types of people she was drawing were imbalanced or, or a match to her. So if you're unhealthy on one side as the feminine, you're gonna be unhealthy on the other side as the masculine and they're gonna draw polarity to that. And your view of the world of men is going to be skewed as a woman that goes through that. So when you, when you start to hear that as a child, you start to hear that the abusiveness of, of masculinity, you start to believe that masculinity is bad, you start to believe that masculinity is toxic and shameful, it, you start to repress your own masculinity. And I was actually accused as I was younger of being gay sometimes people would ask me brian are you gay you know because there was this this femininity to me and this lack of masculinity and i had to bring it out in myself and as i brought out more masculinity in my own life i got happier and happier now i'm really glad i developed that feminine side because that really made me intuitive and able to read people and be able to go deep with people 
But the masculinity, when you add it to it and you have both sides together, that's when you really start to become powerful, more powerful in the world. So I'm going to invite you to continue to develop out your masculinity. What does that mean? Well, masculinity is decisive. Masculinity is direct. Masculinity is powerful. Masculinity knows how to say no. Masculinity has this grounding aspect that I talk about in so many of my videos. Masculinity can feel into her so deep that he almost knows what she needs before she does because he's penetrating, feeling her. And then when he leads from his masculinity and owns that space of leading, and if that word scares you, you wanna take a deeper look at that leading, he, he leads based on not what he wants and not what she wants, but what the moment needs. What's the most powerful place I can channel, direct flow with this relationship or direct the flow of this relationship because she's the flow as so that we can grow together, so that we can be powerful together. Whether you just met her and you approached her on the street or whether, you, um, whether you've been dating a while. Now think about it. You're gonna always most likely have a hard time getting good at approaching women, getting comfortable with approaching, enjoying approaching women if you're ashamed of your masculinity. If you don't think you're good as a man, you're ashamed of your cock and balls, you don't like yourself, you don't love yourself as a man, you don't believe in yourself that you bring value to women, your masculinity, then approaching women, the presupposition, the thing that you are suggesting to yourself is that you're not good enough. So you're always gonna feel a little ashamed or a little guilty when you go to approach women, meet women, ask women out on dates. And this is true whether you're in sales, this is true whether you're uh, uh, trying to build your confidence, whatever it is, getting over the fear of being male, masculine male, is gonna be huge in your growth, okay? Now this doesn't mean you don't have a feminine side. The feminine side is important too, but most nice guys have a hyper-developed reactive feminine side. So bringing that masculinity helps it to rebalance out. Now, what is number three? We're gonna dive right into number three. So number three is nice guys tend to hide their perceived flaws. What does this mean to hide your perceived flaws? It means they try to act perfect. They shut off all their vulnerability, all their ability to feel, and they wall off and they try to be confident. It's like that fake it till you make it BS. This whole idea that I'm just gonna act super confident and one day I'll be confident. But if you have no emotional access, no feeling, no open heart, which we talk a lot about on this channel, if you're not being vulnerable with people around you, especially the beautiful women around you, they're gonna see you as fake. They're not gonna trust you because they're not gonna be able to feel you. Fake bravado is very unattractive. And if you're constantly using fake bravado to appear confident, it turns women off. I see this all the time when I would take clients out to bars and nightclubs and places like that, mostly bars, and they would walk up to women with this fake bravado. Hi, my name's Brian, how are you? The women would shut off on them immediately. It's because there is no emotional access in that. Now, what's the difference between having real confidence and fake confidence. Well, if you know, I've been talking a lot about true courage lately. And uh, true courage is this whole idea that courage to truly be courageous, to truly be confident, you have to be vulnerable. So that means that if you're scared, you own your fear from courage. That means the courage is the dominant energy, not the fear, but you still feel the fear. So you feel this fear, this nervousness, and you walk right up to beautiful women and you say, look, <laughs> Damn, you make me nervous. Look at you. Oh my God, you're killing it. You're, 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 uh, you're making my lips shake. Now, why did I say that particular set of lines? Because I had a friend that was a natural that said that. I remember hanging out with him many years ago. So he walked up and he was identified with his fear and he was shrinking inside. He was more in touch with his fear than his courage. And he said, you know, hey, I just want to stop you. I just wanted to meet you. There's something about you. And she started to pull back, got into her cell phone, was like, yeah, and half ignoring him. And he saw what he was doing right in the moment. He was a really good natural, knew how to meet women, and he caught himself. He just found her so attractive that it made him nervous. He was like, he was like, she was more attractive than most of the women I'd approached in the past. She was really hot. And he realized what he was doing. So right in that moment, he was like, what am I doing inside? And he changed immediately. Watching this was so such a contrast and so beautiful. He didn't get rid of the fear. He started owning the fear. He started owning his flaws. He started owning his perceived flaws. Hear that. So he immediately went, 
his lip was shaking and he immediately went, wow, look what you're doing to me. I'm shaking, my lip is shaking. You make me so nervous, but look at you, you're beautiful. She put the cell phone away and went, really? Looked right at him, connected to him immediately. And they began to have a real conversation. He got her number and uh, ended up going out on a date with her. It was beautiful to watch. The moment he started to really own his perceived flaws, he started to really believe that he was valuable as a man, his masculinity, and he started to make his needs a priority, the other two topics, while owning his flaws, with his flaws, that's when he became interesting. That's when he became attractive. Flaws are part of what makes you attractive. Flaws are what makes you interesting. Back in the old times, they would take a bowl, and if they built a bowl and it got cracks in it, they would then seal the cracks with gold and then re redo it. And you get all these beautiful lines and cracks that added to these bowls in, in, these, in these cultures with all these lines. I think, I think it was a Greek culture, but I could be wrong. You guys might know. And these bowls would start to look beautiful because each crack added a new piece of character to the art, okay? Think about trees. If trees just grew perfectly straight all the time, they wouldn't be as interesting. But think about a tree that's got knots and branches and that move and spread out this way and that way. It's part of what adds character to it. I had a friend, another friend that was a natural that I watched and hung out with for a while, and he had all these nervous ticks. He would actually like tick a little to the side when he was talking to women and he owned it all. If somebody called him out on it, he'd go, yeah, so what? And he owned it so well that it became part of his attractiveness. So it's not about getting over all your idiosyncrasies, your flaws. It's about owning those flaws. It's about owning those flaws from courage. And you know how my emotional scale goes. Apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride. So if you're identified with fear, which is lower down, you're gonna have problems. But the moment you get above pride to courage, acceptance, love, peace, that doesn't mean the lower energies are gone. It just means you're up here in courage, looking down at them. And that's where the power really starts. Okay, so those are the three top things I see nice guys doing that really cost them amazing dates, amazing relationships, success, whether it's in business, sales, doesn't matter, uh, connections with people they love, like their family members. If you really wanna improve this area of your life, this next thing is gonna be very important. What is one thing that you can start doing today that's really powerful? Well, the number one thing I see nice guys do when they wanna change these area of, uh, this area of their life is they go into a lot of wanting. They go into a lot of craving and needing to change it. I need to figure this out. I need to change this. You're probably doing that right now as you watch this channel. And that wanting comes across as needy again. It comes across as, as please help me, please validate me, please help me fix myself. So you might go out there and say, I'm gonna approach women from courage. And this is so common. I see so many clients do this. And they're like, hi, my name is uh, Brian. I just wanted to say, hi, what's your name? And, they think they're encouraged, but there's this lean in going forward. Wanting is more dominant than the courage, okay? In true courage, you're in a sense of adventure. You're in a sense of alertness, aliveness. You're relaxed into your spine. Feel your spine, feel your legs, feel your grounding, all the embodiment I teach. And I have a beautiful book called The Art of Fearless Seduction that talks about this embodiment. That becomes really essential. So. The first thing I do is let go of the wanting. I feel the wanting, that craving part of me that wants to move towards her, I welcome it. And I feel that part of me, it's like, okay, I have to get her to like me. And I start letting it go. I wanna let it go to the point where I don't need to get a response from her. I don't need to get her to like me. I might be scared, I might be nervous, I might want her to like me, but I can let go of that need and say, hey, I can handle it. I'm a man, I'm a masculine, powerful man and if she doesn't like me, there'll be somebody else. And I look for that feeling inside myself. I can, and I'll, I'll still be nervous inside, but I'm looking down at that nervousness saying, I can handle that nervousness. That's where you become more powerful. Now, the first thing that might happen is if you go down the emotional scale, if you're in fear or wanting, and you go down to fear, then you go all the way down to apathy, you might experience resignation. So that'll be a decrease in energy. I let go of the wanting. This used to happen to me all the time and suddenly I feel heavier. So then I go back to the wanting to feel better because it's higher on the scale. But that is not the answer. Well, the answer is not going down to apathy. You went in the wrong direction. If you let go of the wanting, the next one above it is anger, pride, and courage. You're gonna feel a surge of energy whether you go into anger, pride, or courage. At anger, it's gonna be, fuck it, I'm gonna go talk to her. That's not gonna probably work too well either. 
pride, it's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to show her. I'm going to beat her. I'm going to show everybody around. In courage, it's win-win. Pride is win-lose. Courage is win-win. When you get to courage, there's going to be a sense of, fuck, I'm nervous, but you know what? Whatever happens, I can accept it. Freedom from outcomes starts to develop in courage and a sense of vulnerability starts to develop in courage that you can handle. A sense of vulnerability, hear that, that you can handle. I can handle my vulnerability. I'm nervous. It's like that guy that, that had his lip shaking. It's like my lip shaking. I'm nervous, but I can handle it. But that's where you want to approach from. So as soon as you get back to that space, no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome is, I can handle it. That's why I'm moving my hands like this. It's like, I'm a little nervous, but let's fucking do it that's where you begin to grow. From courage, you'll start to eventually move to acceptance where your body will start to calm more. You'll start to relax more and then eventually peace. And as you get up in the peace, you're really owning being a guy uh, that can handle these states more and more and more. Okay? So feel that sense of courage. And then when you've got that sense of courage, start to walk over and do your first approach, ask a girl out. Let's, let's use approaching as an example, but it might be something you need to say to somebody you care about. It might be a sales call. It might be going out on a, on a third date and, and really moving the date forward, taking that risk and, and moving it towards a bedroom or moving it uh, towards more intimacy. Okay. But let's use the, the walking up and approaching as an example. You walk over, you say, hi, and there's this grounded nervousness, which is like, hey, you know, there's something about you. I just had to meet you. And you don't have to call out your nervous tics, but let's say they're happening. And you're just owning them. You're feeling alert and alive. And you're like, wow, this is, she's so beautiful. She makes me so nervous. I love it. That's what you're saying inside. Or she's so interesting and you're enjoying her. And then she starts to respond. The first thing that most nice guys do at that point is they go right back into wanting. You got a positive response, she leaned in, she showed interest and immediately you go, oh my God, it's working. And you start to go right back into wanting or they pull back and wanna get out of the interaction because it's working. They don't stay in that solid place. And I want you to become aware if that begins to happen to you. Learn to just relax and stay in that solid place. Oh, I feel the wanting coming on. I'm gonna let it go again and go back into my body. Now, the first few times you approach or move something forward, you might lose control not be able to get it back for a minute or two. But once you do it four or five times, it's gonna get easier and easier. Oh, I'm starting to go into wanting. Let it go, feel my spine, feel my legs, feel grounding, feel relaxed in my body, feel the whole body up and down, feel the earth beneath you. Okay, I'm good again. Oh, I might be nervous, but I can handle it again. Hey, I'm really enjoying looking in your eyes. There's something about you. Or, oh my God, you're you're, you're going to be a challenge. You're difficult, aren't you? You know, teasing her a little bit, playing with teasing. There's so many directions you can go, but that's not the theme of this video. You can start, once you're staying solid, you're staying encouraged, you can start to use a lot of the different techniques from my other videos to either banter, flirt, be playful, and so forth. But the key is you got to get solid inside first. And so every time that wanting kicks back up, which it's going to probably multiple times in interaction, especially the first two or three minutes, which is when you're first getting comfortable talking to somebody, uh, multiple times this nervousness is gonna kick up and start to put you back into wanting and you just settle it back down. With a little bit of practice, I promise you, you can get control of this. You can start to relax in your body. You can stay vulnerable, strong with your heart open in a healthy way. And that will be the most attractive version of yourself. That will be the powerful version of yourself. And as you let go of these other things that I'm talking about, because they're going to come up, that's what's going to cause it. The first, the three topics I talked about here today. And as you start to feel those come up, wanting to put her needs first, not feeling solid as a masculine man and hiding your perceived flaws when you start to hide and you relax and open and say, oh, I'm just going to own them again that's when your true power will come out. When, when you stop doing those behaviors and start really staying in your body and owning who you are. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's been a fun video to create and I love breaking the nice guy because so much more joy and love and peace for both you and the women in your life uh, begins to ensue when you get past the nice guy because you become a real guy. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be a dick. You just got to be honest and real. And that's what this is really about. 
So uh, if you want to learn more about this stuff, definitely uh, check out my channel, truecourage.io, or check out thefearlessman.com, which is where all my dating products are. And truecourage.io is all about developing more courage. And with that said, make sure to comment in the video. I definitely want to see those comments. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, if you're getting a lot of value out of this content, because I don't want you to miss any of it. I'm going to be bringing you, be bringing you more content on how to develop courage and power in your life, as well as breaking the nice guy, as well as the dating stuff. And make sure to watch my last week's video. This is huge on uh, the basics of the basically how I broke down the nice guy in detail last week. And that video will really help you to understand this video more if you haven't watched it already. So uh, again, uh, hopefully you like this. And remember, only the courageous really live. I'll see you in the next video.